Welcome back. A couple days after the mayhem with this one and the other one. So we'll take a look at what this got beat up with and then the other one. So overall, this thing has minimum damage. The only things that really are wrong with this are the bolts pulled out for the sway bar bushing. Uh, we're definitely going to have to put more fluid in for the radiator, but besides that, this Toyota freaking thing made it through the woods and everything else. I mean, she's a little dirty now. Uh, Mikey's definitely loving his new truck. Loves this thing. Oh yeah, and here's the muffler again. Besides, you know, it really fucked that one up good. I think that's a pretty big hole. Right. Yeah, the sway bar bushing. Gone. <laughs> like, this thing's definitely an animal. Now we'll go check out the big old Ford and see the damage what I did to that. So we're missing that side. That's supposed to be like that over there. I already got the front tire off. I mean, it would be cool to be freaking dualies in the back like that. Maybe one of the other trucks next time. Well, it blew the hose out from the fitting on the rubber line, so we got to get another rubber line and key fitting because that one's probably definitely junk. And then the cap spit out on the drive shaft, so we probably smoked a rock and it spit it all out. Well, luckily, that'll be an easy fix. Uh, this thing was definitely an animal. So much fun. <laughs> And the hood latch bent over, so when we were coming down the road, the hood flew up like this, so when we came back. Overall, she's a fucking animal. Uh, we're going to go get some parts for that, and we'll be back. So I looked around the shop for a while. I remember I did get a new brake line for the Ranger chassis what was underneath this at the time and they gave me a double ended one so I finally found it because it's got the two ports on the back side for the front lines instead of one side so we'll be able to use this to replace that one hopefully I can get those two fittings off there in that section so here we go so we're going to spray these down real good I got a little bit of blaster left Get them all freaking nice and soaked. Let that sit. And we'll see if we can break them loose. So, we got the back of this all cleaned out so we can get to the fuel tank. Because that moved. Uh, we got to reposition that again. And then while I was cleaning this. This big thing just showed up. So, I guess he's got a leaky fuel line. So... We'll end up doing this one. I'm just waiting on him to come back with a couple more parts for the line so I can do them. This should be like pretty quick and easy. So while we're waiting for him, got a duck underneath that fucking crane. <laughs> we'll get to the brake line here and try to get this off and everything. Hopefully that soaked. I did get myself another can, so if we have to, we'll keep spraying. So I'm not sure that line there is actually going to come off. It looks like it's pretty corroded. I might end up just flaring this side and maybe the other side. And this is why you check the can before you leave the star. Somebody dropped the fucking thing. And they put it back on the shelf. Fuckers. 
Well, we had to cut that. It was twisting. It froze inside the nut. But the nut did untwist, so that's a good thing. Not like there's really much left of that freaking nut what was there originally. Well, now we'll see if we can get the backside off. Might be able to reuse this fitting, but we'll see. Nope, couldn't get to it. So, all I could do was cut it. So, we'll reflare these two so we can hook it up to this new piece. And hopefully, I just don't lose this little blocker because that thing will definitely be in handy. So, just put a whole new line in from the top all the way down for the front line. So, that's the new one for the massive cylinder. This is the passenger side, so I just reflared this side. So, now we can put this T fitting in and then hook it up to the caliber. And then we can bleed the system. And I'll help brakes. And then we can fix that. Hopefully I got some bearing caps. New lines in. Uh, we just have to pull this one off. Well, everybody left. Uh, one more friend coming over. She's going to help me bleed the brakes out on this. We're getting there. Brakes are bled. Everything nice and solid again for the brakes. And then we'll do the joint once we get the tire back on to make sure that that clears. Well, we got plenty of room for that. So we'll just zip tie it to about there. And that will give me enough length so I don't get it bound up in the tire. That will do. Well, at least everything's going good. We'll be back out on the trail soon. This thing's got pretty good turn to lock the lock on it. So, we got clearance for the back for the line. So the boggers won't rip it off. When you got knobs, they take everything what's not freaking tied down. Two more to loosen up on the yoke crack here. And I take it the skid plate took a goddamn good hit. Thank God I had that for the transfer case. I even tweaked the frame a little bit over there. And definitely was a good hit. And while I was down here. So I think that's a little broke. It's no longer attached. So we're going to have to use the come along and pull this whole thing back and then add a plate in, in there and weld it all in if we can't get the bolt out. But knowing these old Fords, that ain't fucking coming out. Because these bolts never come out. Especially for the year it is. So we'll just make a plate around the bolt. And then weld it all in, add a little extra gussets up here. And that will solve that problem. Haven't checked the other side yet, but that side doesn't seem like it's bad. Nope, oh, it's good. So that's what it's supposed to look like. And that's what it looks like. All broke, not even attached. That's a good freaking inch space. A good thing we didn't twist the top bit off. Well, we'll finish pulling the drive shaft out here so we can change the universal joints. Well, we got that one out. Well, we'll find some universal joints for it. Or is I gonna have to take the breaker bar or yeah, the big breaker bar and try to get this out, this seized inside here. Hopefully it comes out without me bending it. Oh, uh, here's a cool little trick. Like, so, 
these get stuck into place you can't get a hammer to them or something to pry into them to get them out because both of these were seized in I got the other side free now I got to get this side to free you can use the come along with tension as long as you keep enough threads on the end of the these so you don't hurt yourself or anything you're definitely going to be under the tension when they're seized like this Well, I'm tired. We're going to let this thing sit overnight with pressure on it. I sprayed it a whole bunch of times. Hopefully it'll get in there and it'll loosen up. Because if not, I can't get the drive shaft back in. Well, we'll know tomorrow. So... We were able to get this one to come out, and this one. It'll be a little tight getting back in, but they are free. So now we can freaking put the drive shaft back in, and then we can try to weld this piece back in. It definitely stressed itself up here a little bit, but that's going to have to do for now. We did beat this thing pretty bad in the woods, so drive shaft next. Oh, a new case. Oh, we got all the. So we got the joint all cleaned out. Got the grease flowing through it on both sides. Uh, it was pretty corroded in there, so we got a new cap end. So these fit for the new end for these, so we'll just throw those on, considering my vice is fucking a little broke, so I'll have to get a new one or make one out of that one again, so we'll put the cap ears on and we'll throw this fucking bad boy in. So, we got this in, so do this piece in the morning. And I think this free hub is broke because it just keeps turning. But it shouldn't. It should only go to one way and then back. Well, I can just keep doing circles in it. So this hub is locked in permanently. I'm not sure what's broke in it. I don't care right now. The other side still clicks in and out for the hub. So, I mean, we're going to be upgrading these to one ton axles anyways. These Dana 40s. I've seen better days. So, we'll make sure we grease both these joints. So we don't have another bearing failure again. Should get me through another month or two with this. Until the other truck is ready. So we'll just take the wire wheel. Clean this all up. Weld that one piece back into position and then add another plate around it just to give it a little extra force. It will probably break again or the top will break. Just what happens with these lower katrink arms. They're not very strong after drinking 20 years of northeast fucking salt. Well, we got it all jacked up. Add it all. Ready to be welded in. And we'll weld that section in shortly. Oh, we're gonna add a little extra heat just to warm it up some. Get a little bit better penetration for this first weld. And we got the first pass in. We'll knock off the scale, go back over it one more time. Oh, ready for the second pass. Make it nice and thick. Hopefully this time it won't break, but it probably will if we trash it like we did last time. Definitely was fun. Oh, I'll weld it in. Well, that should do for now. 
get us back up and rolling for the next time. So that should do it on this for right now. I mean, still have to fix this, but for right now at least we can drive it again, so that is good. You're going to see more of this going out in the woods. Oh, and we have a little goodie. What will be later on? The car? We got something cool. We'll keep you posted when that shows up. Good night. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed. Have fun. Look forward for some more videos. Later. Subscribe, share, and hit that like button.